So yeah, just been looking into this atom thing. Recently did an expose on the uh, nuclear weapons hoax. A lot of talk been going on about these nuclear weapons not being real and just being a bunch of fear mongering, control, um, psychological operation type thing. I guess nuclear weapons are pretty scary, so fear mongering might be an accurate description, but I doubt they would be as scary if people couldn't see how much damage they can cause. Maybe we should ask 1945 Japan. Ah, oh, right, probably not appropriate. Hi, I'm R. And I'm Jay. And in this video, we're going to listen to Worldwise talk about his proof that atoms aren't real. No, seriously, that, that's what we're doing. Enjoy. And I'm looking at these atoms now. I, I, I want to see what these atoms look like. I mean, we know they've talked about atoms since the ancient Greek days. You know, you can go to Democritus and a lot of those writers and they talk about these atoms. And You have clearly done some intense research. As far as we know, Democritus was in fact the first person, along with his mentor, Leucippus to theorize atoms as the building blocks of matter, though at that time in 500 BC Greece, they believed atoms to be the smallest particles that make up matter. But we now know subatomic particles are even smaller, given we have been building on this idea for two and a half thousand years, and every experiment during this time has only strengthened the idea. I'm really wondering how you're going to knock down all that research. They even had societies built around atoms. All this talk about atoms, and, and they claim like these things are invisible. You know, once again, physics, quantum physics, talking about black holes, they're invisible. Yet, on the other side of the cheek, they say there's observable evidence. Well, atoms are invisible in the sense that you can't distinguish individual atoms with the naked eye, but you are made of atoms, and I'm sure you aren't invisible. What's important is this observable evidence you mentioned. It refers to experimental data which reliably demonstrates the existence of something. It doesn't refer to the literal visual observation, just like how I can prove to a blind person that my hand is real by slapping them in the face with it. Okay, well, show me the evidence. I'm looking at these... Um pictures I type in on Google real picture of Adam and what do we get more fucking cartoons well for a start it helps to do a proper Google search rather than include the word physics in the search description you should have just left it at real picture of atoms like this and here is what you really need to understand Atoms are so closely linked that to get an accurate picture using light is extremely difficult. Atoms are so much smaller than the wavelength of visual light that they don't really interact. It requires lots of extremely controlled variables and expensive equipment to get an image of an atom using light, and all you really end up with is something like this. That's why scientists generally use electron microscopes and digital constructs, because they are more useful and easier to obtain. Let's see what we got here. Um some Jews in the mix, uh, look at this guy, look at this guy, hero scientist of Adam, I mean, what is this shit, man? Well, it's a few pictures of an artistic rendition of atoms, and physics diagrams and a couple of pictures of actual atoms with a few supposed Jews in the mix. It's a poorly executed Google search. Your mistake is that you put the word physics at the end of that search because now you are seeing images of how atoms work within the realms of physics. If you just typed real pictures of atoms, you would have gotten some like these. It's another belief system. This is another religion. Yes, the religion of atoms. We are the children of atom, ready to spread his word. But in all seriousness, no, it's not a religion. The belief in atoms is based off observations. Now, that doesn't necessarily have to be literally looking at an atom. We can observe how they interact with the world around them. For example, an experiment conducted by J.J. Thompson involved surging an electrical charge through a glass tube with reduced internal pressure, making it a near vacuum. The result was electrons were pushed to the end of the glass tube in a resulting in a green glow, which you can see in this video here. This is a cathode ray tube. Inside, there's nothing uh, inside. They've, it's actually a vacuum tube, uh, so there's nothing but a vacuum on the inside. Uh, and it's called a cathode ray tube because this is the anode and this is the cathode. All right. 
uh, when it's hooked up to an electric current, like I'm about to do here, you can see a beam moving across. You might think it's light, but when you take a magnet to light, it doesn't do this. You can see that it's bending or deflecting away from the magnet, so we know that it's not actually um, light. What J.J. Thompson summarized was that he was seeing a piece of an atom flying from one end of the cathode ray tube to the other, and that the piece of the atom that he was seeing was negative based on the end of the magnet that um, was causing a repulsion. So the negative end of the magnet was causing a repulsion, therefore the particles must be negative. I even went, I went to a uh, physics website, physics forums, and someone way back in the day here, 2000, <clears throat> 2006, asked pretty good questions that I'm asking here, like, where are these atoms? Let me see a real picture. You know what I mean? Because my, my question's always been, if you can't see it, how can you work with it? It is worth noting that a physics online forum is not guaranteed to be restricted to just physicists. So I wouldn't necessarily trust all the questions or answers given on it, as someone as inept as you could go on there and just start answering questions. Also, you can't see magnetism or gravity, yet they are accepted facts because we can observe their effects on the world around us and conduct experiments to quantify them. Hold on. Please don't tell me you reject magnetism and gravity too. Either way, even if we ignore this, we can still find photos of atoms if you look for the pictures properly, just like we managed to do. You know what I mean? That doesn't make any sense. It's like if I, if I can't see a black hole, how can I measure it 300 trillion miles or whatever, light years? You know what I'm saying? Well, that's fairly easy to explain. In the case of black holes, we can measure the effects of their gravity on neighboring objects. For instance, black holes pull in gas and debris, which orbits the black hole with tremendous speed and force, causing it to heat up and emit X-rays. We can then detect the X-rays. We can also measure the orbit of stars and locate the center point of their orbit, which can be an indicator for black holes. And we can even use the influence black holes have on light to detect obscurities in starlight. It's the same concept here with these... Um with these uh, microscopic things that are so small we need particle accelerators to be able to zoom in and work with them and well i guess you're half right particle accelerators don't zoom in on anything but they do work with very small particles and all i'm seeing is cartoons out here i mean people and then people who don't know what they're talking about i mean look let's read some of the stuff here on this physics forum picture of a real atom and I'll leave the links in the description. I think I heard from a Nobel laureate in physics that from the electron microscope we were able to see the picture of a real atom for the first time in the 1970s. But my chemistry textbook written in 2000 said that no one has actually seen an atom. What is going on? Okay, this is a really easy question to answer. It's simply a problem of language. All you have to do is define the terms picture and image. An image is any visual representation of something that can be constructed digitally from radio waves or any other form of information, such as what happens in an electron microscope. The term picture, on the other hand, is usually used to describe a photograph, something that is actually a direct measure of reflected light from an object. The problem is that both these terms are basically interchangeable in everyday language language. In reality, we only had digitally constructed images taken by electron microscopes in the 70s. The first actual photograph of an atom wasn't taken until 2012. So when some guy on the internet says he thinks he's heard a Nobel laureate say something, we should probably take it at face value. Yeah, what is going on? That's a great fucking question. What is going on? So let's see what some responses are. I guess it depends on what it means to see. Okay, continue, continue, because that sounds a little crazy. Yeah, that sounds crazy. That depends on what you mean by C. No one has ever, ever, he spelled it wrong, no one has ever seen a single atom with an optical microscope, but there are pictures using atomic force microscopes, AFM, that clearly show topological pits where atoms lay. Topological pits. I believe scanning tunneling microscopes, STMs, are also are strong enough to depict single atoms, but I'm not 100% sure. 
you're not 100% sure. Well, you better be 100% sure if you want to deal with evidence here. Why do you expect a random person on a forum to be 100% certain of things? Surely you realize that anyone can post on the forum. Lawrence Krauss and Brian Cox aren't the likely people you will find answering questions on these types of forums. You might get lucky and actually have a third-year physics student or even an employed physicist reply to some questions, but even then they aren't going to be representing the limits of knowledge on the subject. Why not send a tweet to Neil deGrasse Tyson asking him for a picture of an atom? It's probably a better method of research than the one you have currently chosen. So let's go to this link that he's talking about and see what he's talking about. What is this here? Okay. Physics website. This looks official. Okay, AFM image. Let's let's take a peek at that. I mean, that looks really major. Wow. They actually... I mean, that looks like some Hubble telescope shit. Is that meant to be derogatory? The Hubble telescope is amazing. And what the hell are you expecting? This is a literal image of atoms. The thing that you are searching for. You can't expect things at the atomic level to look as detailed as the Mona Lisa. It's amazing we have as detailed images as we do. And we actually have significantly more detailed images to look at than this one. So maybe you should put a bit more detail into your search. Fucking computer generated image. Like what am I looking at? What is this shit, man? I mean, am I um going crazy here or am I just not getting it? Maybe I'm just, I'm the retard here. I mean, maybe I just don't know. I need to go to school for this stuff. I'm going to answer yes to all of those. Yes, those are computer generated images created from the data collected by the atomic force microscope and converted into electrical signals and then translated into a visual representation. It's the same way that MRIs work and it's even the same way that the human eye works. Eyes detect wavelengths of light, which it converts into different electrical signals which travel through neurons and into the brain, where the brain translates the information into a useful visual representation. So you definitely aren't getting it, and you probably should go to school. You know, I mean, look at... <laughs> I mean, this looks like uh, Photoshop, baby, all day. I mean, what, what is this? If someone was going to the effort of photoshopping an atom, why would they make it look this ambiguous? They could easily create an image of an atom that looks exactly like the diagrams you see in textbooks, and I'm sure that would be more than enough to trick someone as stupid as you. The reason these images don't look that interesting is because they are attempting to visually demonstrate something that your eye is physically incapable of seeing. People really think this is real. I mean, I, it really um, boggles the mind. I guess this is what they need particle accelerators for. That is definitely not what particle accelerators are for. Pictures of atoms. Yeah, I bet. At the link you provide, 10 images down from the top is a blue image with the title Internal Atomic Structures. I have a question for anyone exactly. What internal structures are shown here? Quarks, electrons, protons, neutrons, mesons, etc.? Well, I don't know. I don't know what picture that is because I didn't go all the way. Let's see. I guess he's referring to this one. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. It's obvious at this point that you aren't putting the effort in to understand or even read about the evidence you are dismissing. The fact that you just jumped on the first link on a physics forum and aren't even willing to read the descriptions of the images you are dismissing as fake shows quite clearly that you have made up your mind and are just soaking up as much confirmation bias as you can. Looks like, uh, the face on Mars. I mean, what is this shit, bro? What is this? What are we looking at? This looks like Legos. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, all right, let's go back to the physics form. 
Why why are you sticking to this physics forum? You clearly aren't taking the response seriously. Maybe try reading a science article or watching a lecture. Get some different sources of information. Maybe email a physicist and actually get someone to explain it to you. And while you are doing all of that, you have to think about how any of that would be possible without the existence of atoms. Because if you are going to deny the existence of atoms, you may want to put up an alternative theory which explains electricity and the chemistry which makes your computer function. There's a picture of a barium ion here. We're going to go to that. What's this barium ion? Let's see. Planet Earth is viewed from the Voyager spacecraft outside of our solar system. Look at that dot. That's Earth. Oh, and they put it right beside this barium ion. A single trapped barium ion held fixed in space in an RF Paul trap located in Seattle. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, let's zoom in on that. Let, let's get a closer look. I don't know why someone decided to put those two images next to each other, but it does kind of illustrate something. When something is very, very small or very, very far away, it's almost impossible to get a high-resolution image of it. If the image is made up of pixels and the object in the image is only a few pixels across, then you can't expect to see much detail. And unfortunately, when we try to zoom into the atomic level, it's even harder to get a clear resolution because atoms are affected by photons in such a way that the mere act of observing them under light causes them to move and distort but when it comes to determining the existence of atoms none of this matters because we can test for their existence in other ways which don't require visual observation of the atoms themselves in fact we have known about atoms before the invention of the microscope or cameras and well before we had ones good enough to observe atoms themselves wow that's amazing look at that look at that dot and people believe in this shit. They they worship this shit. Don't get it twisted. If you try to tell these quantum physicists that they're wrong, that everything that they're talking about is fucking kooky Star Trek shit, they will hunt you down. I mean, they have no problem shitting on religion and the Bible, the Quran. Try to shit on their physics books. See what happens. Well, firstly, if you're going to claim that science is a religion, then you have removed the only real counterexample to all other religions, because science is exactly the opposite in almost all regards to Christianity, Islam, and any faith-based belief system, hence why many scientists will criticize those respective doctrines. It doesn't make sense to use the word religion as a pejorative term if your belief system is synonymous with that term. Science is based off testable evidence and has no authority, which means even you could change the scientific understanding if you put the work in. Well, maybe not you, but someone with a few more IQ points could. Also, if you look at the track record for scientists versus religious fundamentalists, who would you say is more prone to violent outbursts in defense of their beliefs? A scientist may get upset if you approach them on the street and start claiming atoms aren't real and that he is part of a religious organization, but that is to be expected when you insult someone's intelligence without valid argument. I think this is a good place to end the video, since he pretty much just continues to demonstrate a perfect example of the Dunning-Kruger effect. He dismisses everyone's statements in the forum, and only stops to highlight statements people make about their uncertainty in regards to the images and their own understanding of physics. He dismisses language he doesn't understand as being false, with no attempt at further investigation, and even declares that general observation of reality is proof enough of God, abandoning his previous requirement of extremely clear picture evidence to believing in something. Feel free to click the link in the description if you want to watch the rest of the video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe for regular videos, like this video, and share it around to help us raise the bar of public discourse.